Yeah, now I'm kind of heading um, back to Route 7, which is like um, Chile's Route 40. So I think the famous rides or drives um, is very much Route 40 in Argentina, which goes down the side of the Andes. Sometimes it jumps into the mainland a bit, uh, into big open spaces. But yeah, that's pretty famous. Uh, and on this side, it's Route Chile. Oh, sorry, it's Route 7 in Chile. Um, which is also called uh, Catera Astral, um, which is yeah that road that goes down. I think uh, both roads are half paved, so you kind of have to. Whoa, that's so cool! Look at those rapids. Amazing. I have crossed back into Chile uh, at the border named uh, or the border pass called Futilafu. Um, it was a very very simple border it took like uh, 20 minutes each side very very quick no one waiting uh, no drums at all all the paperwork very professionally done so that was quite cool um, the border road is like this so I think any time you want to cross quickly, the best bet is to go on a dirt road because there's less people. Um, as long as the dirt road's in pretty good condition and it's not going to slow you down too much. So, uh, yeah, that's the crossing. So last night I camped uh, next to this river stream. Uh, very, very beautiful place. I've done a separate video for that, so check that out. It's kind of should be posted around the same time as this one. Uh, there was a suspension bridge there that was like, really really old and wobbly uh, a lot of fun to ride over get some good photos so cool check there definitely check that out so yeah now i'm kind of heading um back to route 7 which is like um chile's route 40 so i think the famous rides or drives um is very much route 40 in argentina which goes down the side of the andes sometimes it jumps into the mainland a bit uh, into big open spaces but yeah that's pretty famous uh, and on this side it's route chile oh sorry it's route 7 in chile um, which is also called uh, catera astral um, which is yeah that road that goes down i think uh, both roads are half paved so you kind of have to whoa that's so cool Look at those rapids. Amazing. Wow. Welcome to Chile. Let's check out the other side. Wow, I hope that shows up on the camera okay. Uh, it's actually very, very high. Um, yeah. Good morning, guys. Uh, it's Friday, the 27th of January. Um, big hello from Chile. Uh, uh, it's about 10 in the morning here. We've had a bit of rain. I'm just waiting for the tent to dry. Uh, so this is the campsite I found. It's a nice little wild campsite. Um, the good thing about it is it's right next to this uh, very nice stream and what's even more exciting is <laughs> this bridge here which um, looks like you shouldn't really go over it. It looks pretty um, unstable. It's pretty old. A lot of the wood's fallen off it. So let's go check it out. Uh, so I'm actually hoping to ride over it after this so I'm going to walk over it first with the video and then we'll see how we go. So, it says here max is uh, kilos is 500, so my bike's easily under that, which is good, but um, I can't imagine trucks and that going over here, but it's quite skinny anyway, so, yeah, but what you find is it's obviously a suspension bridge, but um, it's very wobbly, <laughs> so hopefully this shows up on the footage, but if you get a bit of a shake going like this it's really wobbly <laughs> so 
yeah I mean I guess they made them to last back then and this is still going strong so um, yeah you got some awesome rapids here it's very nice to camp here and listen to that all night it was excellent uh, so yeah we'll walk over it make sure it's all good for the bike and then we'll give it a go I don't think it actually goes anywhere, it kind of just goes to the couple of houses that are on this side. So yeah, that's the bridge. Yeah, as I said last night, I camped near the stream. Um, to be honest, this is what it's all about. Like this, this morning's ride has been absolutely spectacular. It rained this morning, so I woke up with rain hitting the tent. Um, obviously, you don't want to be packing up a tent wet, so I slept in a bit. Um, by the time I got up, it was sunny. The sun aired the tent in about five minutes flat, so that was quite perfect. And now, because of the rain, um, there's no dust on the dirt gravel tracks and yeah it's absolutely um, spectacular scenery along this road so if you're ever in this part of the world definitely um, check it out um, it's just constant mountains constant lakes constant streams constant waterfalls um, yeah pretty much ticks every boxes really Um, it's spectacular here like it's just surrounded by mountains uh, some of them are like ice capped even in the summer you see the water's pouring down uh, off the side this is the, the there's a really big river here that they use for rapids apparently it's like the most famous in the world um, and yeah I wrote down and had a look at the, the waters just the blue is the blues um, yeah very very spectacular So yeah, very popular for rafting. Um, <laughs> I'd say it's probably popular for anything really. I mean, it's pretty spectacular. So I'll shut up for a bit and I'll, um, yeah, ride along a bit till uh, it gets boring. So it might take a while, but um, let's have a look.
If you go all the way to the end of this road, there's an airport for some reason. Um, and past the airport, you can get a boat that goes all the way around the glacier and then there's a point there where you can obviously see it carving into the sea um, or you can do what I'm doing and that's obviously quite expensive because there's a boat involved uh, and the weather's challenging and all that stuff so um, or you can do what I'm doing and you can go this way by yourself um, and I think halfway or less than halfway because the glacier is massive uh, you can uh, stop up here. There's a viewpoint where you've just got to walk like 20 minutes uh, and then you can climb up a bit and Hopefully see the glacier in all its glory. So it's going to be all about the weather uh, Because if you see here This must be the glacier. So you see it on top of the mountain there um, Now if that was a clear day, I'm sure that's higher uh, and We'll be able to see much much more but the place I'm camping, you can see glaciers all around, but then you look up again and the clouds have come in and it's all kind of gone. So, um, yeah, it's all about the weather down here. Uh, and when the sun comes out, it can get to like 25 degrees and as soon as it goes away, it can drop down to about 11 again. So, yeah, it's pretty, pretty hard. But yeah, if anyone wants to know what Chile's about, this is a pretty good <laughs> place for a summary. So you have always have these running streams of beautiful beautiful clean water uh, some are more rapid some are more like this um, you can have a lot of lush jungles glaciers on top of mountains uh, there's a massive glacier up there but it's covered by cloud this is pretty much summary of the weather in Chile as well especially down in Patagonia um, but I thought this was quite cool it's like absolutely sheer wall that they put the road around <laughs> but yeah it's pretty cool so yeah enjoy Hey guys, so the road continues uh, and the scenery just gets better and better. Apart from that pile of sand, but anyway. Uh, so, here you have the mountains here with the clouds like hugging them at the top, but you can see a part of the glaciers coming down there and forming like almost like a frozen waterfall. Uh, and here we've got like just waterfalls everywhere coming off the glacier and the massive stream. Uh, heading down this way so yeah we'll keep riding both sides there's waterfalls I must have seen a hundred waterfalls just on this road alone um, yeah it's just absolutely spectacular uh, it goes from like very very like lush looking rainforest to just really rocky uh, sheer cliffs uh, sometimes it's really sunny, sometimes it's really cloudy, sometimes it's rainy. So yeah, it's um, definitely all types of adventure here. And it's very, very untouched. Uh, apart from the road coming through here, there's no houses, uh, there's no infrastructure. There was just a pile of sand, that's it. I guess that's for keeping the road, uh, continuing with the road work. Come on, son.
these guys are crazy, honestly. The roads here are the gravel's so bad for push bikes, and there's so many hills. Uh, I mean, it's one thing on a motorbike, uh, but <laughs> I can't imagine riding a push bike and carrying all that weight. Um, so, yeah, my hat goes off to them for sure. are still climbing so hopefully this will loop back around we've got um a lovely mountain there whoa big bottle there you go you guys how's that we've got waterfall here beautiful ice capped mountains here, a massive waterfall here. Uh, I know the GoPro makes everything look quite small but yeah the uh, size of these mountains are incredible. And the vegetation here is just so dense. Um, obviously if they're going to pave this going forward they're going to have to widen it a bit so this could be a lot of work. Could be a couple more years, I think. A lot of riding today on um, gravel. It's been pretty challenging, but spectacular to say the least. Uh, so, what do you want to see today? A waterfall? Look at that! That uh, is amazing. And if you don't like waterfalls, we have some ice cap mountains. Uh, so what have I been up to? So uh, right now I'm just leaving a town called Cochrane. It's back there. Um, I'm actually heading north for a change um, on Route 7, Gaitera Austral. Um, I am. I went to Cochrane this morning to get more uh, petrol for the bike because I am crossing into Argentina again today uh, at a pass called Paso um, Robalos. So it's between uh, the Gaitera Grande Lake and Cochrane it's kind of like in the middle um, it's not a very famous pass it's quite remote uh, the road on the map is like really really small which would suggest that it's more um, not, not as popular to use so uh, but apparently the, the the view from there is quite stunning you can see things like flamingos and more wildlife uh, so let's see so uh, what have I been up to so I've had two days camping uh, in the same spot give it a bit of a break from the bike um, I was camping on a, it's called the River Baker, um, and ultimately it runs from that, the big lake that I've been staying near, runs into another lake called Baker Lake, I think, or something like that, no, it starts with B, I'll put it in the description, and then they, they exit, uh, sorry, there's a stream that exits that lake that, um, is the fastest flowing, uh, river in Chile, uh, so it's just, I was camping right on it, and, yeah, it's absolutely stunning. The water is like the brightest, brightest blue because it's got sediments from the glaciers in it. Um, so I think this is a bit of it here, but this isn't Baker, this is something else. But you can see down there, there's another, that's the kind of green color. So it does mix with the, the greener colored water 
um, also downstream uh, and it's just fascinating to see the color mix um, as, as the water from the glaciers which is like brightest brightest blue just goes flying down and then the, the this stream comes into it as well so so yeah it's been um pretty pretty fascinating couple of days actually um, the road hasn't been too bad this is the best part of the road I've seen that's not tarmac so it's almost tarmac but it's just got uh, it's really packed down gravel with a lot of potholes but apart from that you can maintain a pretty good line on it uh, so I mean I've already done this road this morning so I pretty much know what the conditions like so so yeah so there wasn't a fuel station um, until I got into Argentina and I don't really know what uh, where that was or the map was a bit vague so to be better than safe and sorry I rode to Cochrane this morning got some petrol and also got a pretty good feed um, met a couple of guys there had a chat with them at breakfast it was pretty cool uh, it's a, actually a pretty nice town it's um nicer than some of the other ones north so if you're heading through definitely check it out so from here if you keep heading south which is that way down route 7 I don't think there's any more passes you can do on a motorbike you kind of if you're going to get to Villa O'Higgins which is the end of route 7 there are ways to cross into Argentina uh, but you have to go on a boat and uh, you need to walk a track with a horse and all this stuff so you can do it but you can't do it with anything motorized so um, it's a bit of a heads up for anyone doing planning um, I mean I'm sure there's a way I'm sure you could get a private boat that would take you all the way around this the continent I, I don't know but um, but this is the pass there's two passes north for me one's called Chile Chico which is what I was originally going to cross at and this this one's called Paso um, Robalos which is the one I'm actually going to do so you should see that coming up we have to turn off the right here and once I turn right that's the end of uh, route 7 for me uh, until I come back this way so I don't know if that's exciting or sad or <laughs> it's been quite a road to be honest it's um it's obviously quite infamous for cyclists um, well look at that view so yeah route 7 um, Oh, it's a love and hate relationship to be honest it's amazing the scenery you see on route 7 is incredible if it was paved the whole way I don't think it would be as special but I don't know um, yeah let's see I mean they're, they're gonna pave it so in a couple of years uh, this will all be tarmac um, so yeah I guess it's a good thing it opens it up for the people of Chile but I think for adventure tourism I think the way it is <laughs> And the challenge of it is quite special, I think, hence why so many people uh, want to ride it. So, yeah, that's my two cents on it. Um, I mean, Route 40 is paved. It's still famous, I suppose. Uh, I mean, it's not paved all the way, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's got its problems as well with potholes and stuff. So, yeah, let's see what the future brings. Um, so, yeah, so hopefully uh, I've got you all caught up. Um, oh, here's a llama thingy. Good timing. These guys are so funny, they just look at you, they're like, oh god, more people. I think he's looking down that hill thinking, fuck, how am I going to get down there? Where was I? Um, yeah. Not sure. Anyway, uh, that's, I guess, me for the day. I'll probably do a bit more video once we get onto this other road off Route 7. Um, but yeah, right now we've only got like 5Ks of Route 7 to go uh, and then going to jump back into Argentina, slowly head across back onto Route 40 and head down to uh, El Chalten and then to El Calafate. Uh, guy's flying. Okay guys, yeah, we're back. Um, 
We're just about to cross off Katero uh, Strail into uh, Paso Robalos. It's an amazing view of the color green down there. Wow. I think that's Baker, I'm not sure. Doesn't look as running as fast. Cool, so this is where we say goodbye to Katarasaur Route 7 and we go to Paso Robalos. The road is much smaller, isn't it? <laughs> Seventy-two kilometers of this. Hurrah! Lucky it's sunny and the scenery is supposed to be spectacular. So cool, guys. I'll um, I won't let you watch the whole seventy-two. I'll put some video back on when it gets a little bit more exciting. Okay, ciao.